This is the iPhone 14 Plus. Now, while the normal sized iPhone 14 was kind of boring to me this year, this one actually does have me a little bit excited. And that's because Apple is bringing back the Plus branding. They haven't had a Plus branded iPhone since the iPhone 8 Plus, and this is Apple's first big iPhone with a 6.7 inch display that isn't a pro model, and more importantly, it's a big phone that retails under $1,000. This retails for around $899, which is why I thought initially that this might actually be a pretty popular phone because before, if you wanted the biggest size phone, if you just wanted a big screen, even if you didn't care about some of the camera features or some of the other uh, more premium pro features, well, you would still have to buy the iPhone 14 Pro Max just to get that bigger display. And that's not true this year. This time you could just get a normal iPhone 14 Plus, get the big display, and maybe most importantly, get a big battery. Apple is saying that this phone over here has the best battery life out of any iPhone, which I'm kind of interested to test. But hey, you're probably bored of all that. You wanna see the phone, right? And I do too. So let's go ahead and unbox the iPhone 14 Plus. Now you can see the box here, uh, right on the front. There's no new design. There's no dynamic island on the iPhone 14 Plus. This phone is not dynamic, but uh, it's still a pretty good wallpaper over here, good box. And uh, it's very simple to open now, all of, all of Apple's new products. They've gone away with the shrink wrap. They made them super easy to open. You just peel this off and then, waba, there you go, iPhone 14 Plus. Oh, that is a nice blue color. That really does remind me of my Sierra Blue uh, iPhone 13 Pro. So it kind of looks like the 14, the normal 14s inherited that color this year. Ah, this is really nice. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna save my feel in the hand. This is light. All right, I'm just gonna say, it. this is light. I like that, I like that. Uh, so you get your USB-C to lightning cable, of course, and then of course you get your usual Apple documentation. That's right, there's no more SIM card ejector, so you just get an Apple SIM and you just talk about eSIM. All right, but that's the box. No one really cares about the box anymore because the phone is out in the open. And yeah, so let's go ahead and peel this off. And yeah, the phone, it feels great in the hands. I know that's such a cliche, but this one really does. I like it, I like the way this feels a lot better in my hands than my iPhone 14 Pro does. But yeah, let me go ahead and set this up and let me come back and talk about some of my initial impressions of using the iPhone 14 Plus. All right, I set up the iPhone 14 Plus and I've been playing around with it and I actually have a lot of thoughts on it. Some good and some bad and some mixed. Uh, so let's start off with just the display because I feel like that is a big, drawing point to this phone. And yes, before you ask about this great wallpaper, of course you can find out where to buy it in the link in the description below. And yeah, this thing has a big 6.7 inch display. A lot of people are gonna pick up this phone just because it has the biggest display possible in the cheapest price possible for an iPhone, right? $900, you get the 6.7 inch display and it's a nice display. It gets really bright outside. Uh, it's super vivid, it's an OLED display. It looks almost as good as the iPhone 14 Pro display. Like there's really not that much of a noticeable difference display quality wise from the 14 Pro to this 14 Plus. However, uh, the refresh rate is lower. So this is a 60 Hertz display. And if you're used to faster uh, 120 hertz screens, you're going to notice that this is just a phone that doesn't have as fast of a refresh rate. And Apple selling a $900 phone, especially when you compare it to pretty much every Android phone out there, which does have a high refresh rate display, Apple selling this phone at 60 hertz for $900. This is premium flagship phone territory that's definitely gonna ruffle a few feathers. It doesn't bother me as much. Like I've, I've already gotten used to the 60 Hertz display, but I just know like there's people watching this right now and you're raging. You're going, how could Apple not include a ProMotion display on this phone for $900? And I kind of agree with you because this is, even though it's cheaper than the Pro Max, this is still a very expensive phone. Uh, but listen, the 6.7 inch display is nice. Uh, I said this when unboxing it and I'll reiterate it again. The design of this I think is a little bit better than the 14 Pro, at least from the back and, and the sides, because it does use aluminum instead of stainless steel, and that significantly brings down the weight. So, like I said before, this 14 Plus is lighter than a regular iPhone 14 Pro, a 6.1 inch phone. And I just feel like, you know, the stainless steel looks nice and it definitely feels more premium, but I feel like I'd rather just have a lighter phone. So that's one of the things that just using this phone compared to my Pro Max, 
I really like how much lighter the iPhone 14 Plus is. I really wish uh, it, the 14 Pro had the same weight as the 14 Plus. Uh, performance, that's another thing that's going to ruffle a few feathers because this is the first time that Apple has decided to release a new iPhone and not really give it a significant chip upgrade. Now, technically it does get a chip upgrade because this has the A15 chip with the extra GPU core enabled that was in the Pro series of phones. So technically it's a jump up from the normal iPhone 14, but it's not the A16 chip and that's what the iPhone 14 Pro gets. Now, listen, I, I don't like that it's not getting the same chip, but if I gotta be honest, and I, I just had this phone for a short time, day-to-day -day usage between the 14 Pro and my 13 Pro, which the 13 Pro chip is in this, I haven't noticed any speed differences really. So apps open just as fast, uh, everything feels just as fluid. And I feel like we're kind of beyond the point of where these chip upgrades are going to really give us noticeable speed improvements in the phones. So it's probably not that big of a deal this year. But again, it's it's just one of those things that you have to weigh uh, in your decision making when deciding between the regular 14 plus and then the pro models of phones because they're very close in price point. Don't forget, you could spend $100 more and I know it's the smaller size version, but for $100 more, you could jump up to the 6.1 inch sized iPhone 14 Pro. I think the big thing though with not having the A16 chip is losing out on some features. So you don't get that new action mode that is on the 14 Pro. Uh, you also lose out on other really cool features. So even though I said like you get the 6.7 inch display, um, you don't get the dynamic island. This just has the regular notch that the uh, iPhone 12 had, the iPhone 13 had, all the way back to the iPhone 10. And even from just a get rid of the design perspective, I don't think the dynamic island is like a big step up in design uh, from the notch, but you lose out on the usability. The, the, the dynamic island is more than just a cutout. You can actually multitask on the dynamic island. You can actually long press onto it to surface more details. And, and I feel like you're losing out on some functionality by picking a regular iPhone 14 this year. And I don't know if you could really say that about iPhones in the past. They all kind of shipped with the same user interface, the same interactions, and for the first time, the pro phones behave differently than the normal phones. And this really is a Frankenstein phone when you think about all the parts that went into this phone to make it, because you have parts from the iPhone 13, and you have parts from the iPhone 13 Pro, and then you also have parts from the iPhone 14 Pro that make up this phone. So you get the A15 chip uh, that was in the 13 Pro, you get the design of the, you know, iPhone 13 Pro Max. Uh, you get uh, the cameras of kind of the iPhone 13 Pro on the main camera, but then the ultra wide camera is still using the same exact ultra wide uh, camera from the iPhone 13, which doesn't have the macro mode autofocus, which I really like that feature. And I think that's another big area where you're potentially missing out on this 14 plus is the camera because Apple now has a 48 megapixel sensor in the pro series phones. And they also give you other quality of life improvements. Like you can actually use the uh, enhanced resolution to get a 2X zoom, as well as just the physical lens of the 3X zoom. And then also having that ultra wide angle camera, which is better on the pro, it also supports macro mode as well. So this just having the main camera sensor from the 13 Pro and then the worse ultra wide camera, I feel like for $900, this thing should have a zoom option as well. Um, and yeah, but the, the camera quality itself seems to be pretty good. I mean, the 13 Pro had a good camera. Uh, so obviously this 14 plus is, is gonna have a good camera. Uh, but I, I do miss, I, I assume I'll miss having that extra resolution of the 48 megapixel sensor when shooting in RAW. But again, the pro phones are kind of targeted maybe more towards pro users who would enable the RAW feature. And maybe that's a feature that would be wasted on the 14 plus for most normal users because most normal users should just shoot with the regular 12 megapixel sensor or the binned 12 megapixel sensor on the uh, 14 Pro. Luckily though, that new front facing camera system from the 14 Pro is on the iPhone 14 Plus. And honestly, that is one of my favorite camera upgrades for this year. Uh, the front facing camera is just insane. Having the autofocus, uh, just the quality it now produces is actually really good. So don't be afraid to shoot a video with the front facing camera because it actually holds up pretty well. And this is actually being recorded using the cinematic mode on the front facing camera, which is also really cool. Now, I feel like my experience with the 14 Pro is maybe making me a little bit negative about this phone. Um, but I will say, I think this thing lives or dies 
based on one thing. I think this one thing could potentially make this phone um, uh, the best seller. And that is the battery life. Apple is claiming that technically this will have the best battery life out of any iPhone, even better than the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is $200 more than this phone. So I think if the battery life is unbeatable in this, then that's going to let people weigh the features they want. Do they really want the best camera? Do they really want 120 Hertz? Uh, do they really want action mode or some of these other features that are on the iPhone 14 Pro? And I think for most people, surprisingly, the answer might actually be no, if this thing just has a good battery life and is $200 cheaper than the Pro Max. Like that's all it takes. All the attention is on the Pro phones this year, rightfully so. I feel like it's maybe one of the first times that the Pro phones are actually worth the additional cost. And I just wish this was $100 cheaper looking at it. If this was $800 and you had to spend $200 more to get a Pro phone, I feel like that makes a lot more sense. This being only $100 away from the Pro phone, and listen, even $200 away from the Pro Max, I'm just not sure if this year that's worth it. Like, I feel like more people would have a better phone experience if they just paid $100 more, if they, or if they just paid a little bit more on the monthly carrier plan. But anyway, those are my initial thoughts and impressions. Everything could change by the time I review this phone. So let me know if you liked this video. If you did, give me a like. Uh, if you wanna see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed. And hey, uh, hopefully I'll catch you in the next video if this one wasn't so bad. Maybe you're like, this is a bad video, I'm not coming back. But if you like the video, you'll come back, right? Okay, thank you. Have a nice day.